here with Dr. Dwayne Elmore, a wildlife specialist for OSU Extension. And we're out in the field behind a neighborhood and you can see that there's a forest growing here almost. Yeah. Can you tell us what we're looking at? These are calorie pear. A lot of people know them as Bradford pear, which is uh, one of the more popular cultivars of the calorie pear. Okay, and so people are planting Bradford pears and what they don't realize is they're reseeding out in the wild. Yeah, they're highly invasive in Oklahoma um, and they're invading a lot of prairies and, and shrublands and has huge environmental consequences. What makes them such an invasive species? Well, a lot of the traits that we desire in them for a, a, you know, a landscape plant, actually, they, they grow fast, they can grow in a wide variety of, of sites, mm -hmm. so, and they produce uh, abundant seed, which is bird dispersed. Okay, okay. So all this is just grown here because of birds primarily. Yep. And maybe have come from the neighborhood nearby Abs from planted Bradford. Absolutely. Okay, and so what happens when uh, your field looks like this? How do we manage this? Well, if you have just small seedlings, mowing or burning can kill those seedlings, but once you have established trees like this, they'll re-sprout. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to use some type of herbicide control to keep them from re-sprouting. And they can either be cut and herbicide applied to the, the, the base of the tree, or you can inject it into the stem. There's different methods. Okay, so at this point, our, our problem's gotten worse because the trees have gotten bigger. Absolutely. And, and what you mentioned, it's dispersed by birds. What kind of birds are attracted to this type of tree? Uh, lots of different birds, but actually one of the more common wildlife damage questions that I get during the summer is uh, problems with grackles mm -hmm. in, in neighborhoods and especially though places like strip malls and car dealerships where there's a lot of birds that are congregating and defecating on vehicles and, and people. Yeah, they're annoying. And, <laughs> and the birds love roosting in these dense Bradford pears. So it's a huge problem uh, from a bird damage standpoint to use this plant. Okay, so how can we, you know, manage that a little bit differently? Is there a different plant that we should use in our home yeah, landscape? Or? Absolutely. We have a OSU fact sheet that talks about control of Bradford pears, uh, but it also gives you alternatives, things like red bud, Mexican plum, American plum. Uh, these are all good native alternatives that are not invasive and also don't generally have such a, a, a bird problem. The other problem with Bradford pears a lot of homeowners complain about is that they tend to split during ice storms, mm -hmm. and we have lots of ice storms in Oklahoma, so you invest a lot of time in this you know, ornamental plant, and then it splits in half during an ice storm, and that's very frustrating. Right, so a lot of times people like Bradfords because they bloom in the early spring, mm -hmm. but some of those plants you just mentioned, redbud, they also bloom Correct. in the spring, and they won't have that ice damage problem, and they're a native, redbuds are native, some of the plums are natives. That's correct. Um, now, all the trees that we're seeing in the wild that have these white flowers are not necessarily Bradfords, correct? Yeah, there's a lot of plum that are blooming okay. now as well. So you have to you know, carefully look at the tree to make sure you, you know what you're dealing with because there are native trees that are, are, are blooming white during the early spring. But um, a lo Bradford is a major problem, particularly east of I-35. And you know, places like Arkansas and Missouri, it's actually one of their most problematic invasive plants now. Really? Okay. So as a homeowner, they shouldn't be buying Bradfords or calorie pears right. in I, the nurseries anymore. I would highly encourage people not to plant them if you have them, to replace them. And the other thing I would in encourage people to do if they see Bradford pears offered for sale in nurseries is to talk to the nursery owner and encourage them to offer alternative plants that are not invasive. Uh, I don't think a lot of people realize what an invasive species it is for Oklahoma. So I think this is a great example of how a homeowner who maybe just has a small lot can actually impact the surrounding native plant community. Absolutely. So if they're nearby and they plant in Bradford, this might be a result. That's right. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.